you need is a whip. That's right, a bull whip breaks the sound barrier every time it cracks. The crack you hear is in fact a sonic boom. But what happens when a bull whip cracks? Can we actually see a whip break the sound barrier? Utilizing our time warp cameras, we just might. So let's get cracking. Adam Winrich is a world champion whip artist who holds multiple Guinness World Records. And as you can clearly see, Adam likes to whip it good. We bet you know where that all began. Uh, I watched Indiana Jones too much as a kid. That's what happened there. All right, so emulating one of your heroes. Now, is any of that stuff real? Some of it's real, like wrapping a whip around a person or taking a knife out of someone's hand is real. You actually do that. But the one stunt everybody sees that everyone wants to do is, oh, I want to swing from a tree. Can't really do that one. That's a Hollywood stunt. We've frozen flowers. Now we're going to whip one. All right. Do we need to say it? Hope not, but just in case. Don't try this at home. Here we go. <laughs> that's a little closer than you said it was going to be. Seriously, that's ridiculous. Uh, what else can we put in someone's mouth? Uh, we got pretzels. We can use those. All right, that sounds good. Matt, why don't you take a shot at this? I'm going to shoot some camera work. Oh, of course, it's something pretzel. smaller. Yeah, but it, you're, you like You food. have the little dainty nose. I got this. Oops. Uh, uh, there we go. You said oops. No, I was going to do it again. No <laughs> oops. No way. Yes way. After some coaxing, Matt yeah, got okay. back in there for another right. take. This don't move. So the trick to this part is, is that it'll start out just on the outside of the pretzel. I just work my way in, and I feel my muscle memory come okay. in just a little bit. You got it. You got it. No, no. A little bit more of that. Oh, my God. That's pretty good. OK, yeah. we know you're wondering where our high-speed cameras were during all of this. That's great. Like Rolling. <laughs> that's, that's still pretty amazing. Well, the interesting thing is, you know, I, I do blink, but that's totally based on a visual cue because the sound actually hasn't reached me yet. This view is being filmed at 5,000 frames per second. Flower power. All right, now it's my turn. You actually look a little calmer than I did. Could you just shave a little off right there for me this next time? Cheapest form of rhinoplasty ever. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of these easy tricks. Let's really test this guy. First up, whip meets soda can. The 11 foot long kangaroo leather bull whip easy work of this 12 ounce aluminum pop can. Oh my gosh. Cool. That was cool. We just littered. I'm going to get that. <laughs> the can shreds so violently, half of it flies into the water about 40 feet away. Where'd it go? A little bit left. That's how you drink a soda. OK, we've killed the can. What's next? So that shows the power of the whip, but nothing is flat here than a fire whip, a whip that we're going to actually take soak it in fuel and light it on fire. All right, and what are we going to do with that whip? We're going to crack it and make a fireball with it. Really? <laughs> OK. Well, then we can add danger to danger. I'm all for it. Yeah. So we'd really recommend that you reconsider the idea of cracking 20-foot-long, gasoline-soaked, supersonic, flaming fire whips at home. This has been a public service announcement. All right. Here it comes. <laughs> As if a guy with a 20-foot whip isn't scary enough, now it's on fire. Let's watch that again at 1,000 frames per second this time. But as 
watch, see here we can really see where the fuel starts to peel off and ignites, or ignites right behind it. That's just so awesome. But you can even see, you know, what is the critical velocity that the whip has to hit to start spewing vapor all over the place. Because right. it doesn't happen right near the handle, and the further you get down, the faster it sprays that vapor away. Right. So at the end, you're spraying vapor three or four feet away from the whip tip, right. but that flame is going to make its way over there. The vapor is just kind of floating in the air. All right. Now this is where Chuck Yeager comes in. Our Time Warp high-speed cameras are able to capture all this bullwhip action like you've never seen before. Almost all the action. See, a whip breaks the sound barrier. That crack you hear is actually a sonic boom. I haven't actually seen like the sonic boom itself, like the waves coming off. Could it actually be possible to see what a sonic boom looks like? We know where to go to find out. Jim Bales on, Jim? at MIT's Edgerton Center works with a little-known photographic setup called a Schlieren. The Schlieren can actually capture light when it's distorted by air, which is exactly what a sonic boom does. To do this, the intricate setup must bounce light off mirrors and into our high-speed camera. Push in a little bit. There you go. Adam's target will be a lit candle. The trick will be to blow it out with a single crack of his whip. If done right, the Schlieren camera should show us the whip's sonic boom. All we got to do is have you get right at the target, and we'll be able to see everything. All right. We're queued up, Matt, so go ahead and crank it. I'm ready. Let's see how the expert fares under pressure. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's see this What does that look like? This guy doesn't even flinch, but everyone else does. And he's got the aim. Oh, liar. Look at that. Then, the moment we've been waiting for. Right there, you can see the moment it breaks, the sound barrier should come through. Not only is it twisting, but you can see each individual tassel create its own little wave. So I'm seeing almost 10 waves through there. Look again. What we are seeing is distortion caused by the sound barrier breaking. This wave can be heard as a crack or a boom, and the difficulty of penetrating this barrier, seen here in microcosm, is what made Chuck Yeager's, remember him, accomplishment so amazing. That was really slick. I didn't think I'd ever see anything quite like that in the Schlieren system. All it takes is a whip with the right aim and about 30 seconds of time, and we're set. So let's recap. We took a guy who can destroy things. There it is. And throw fireballs with a bullwhip. Oh. And we confirmed he also breaks the sound barrier daily. There it is. You know, he might have a future in Hollywood if he decides to lose the hat. Man gives us Murphy's Law and the long arm of the law. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to give you a ticket. Nature gives us the laws of physics. And an apple falls to the ground. And man's best friend gives us the Canis familiaris laws of dog dynamics, which states that a wet dog will always shake. And a corollary to that is, of course, a wet dog will always shake right next to you. I think I'm wet now. Wet dog shake because a lack of opposable thumbs make using a blow dryer difficult. But how exactly does a wet dog shake? And do all wet dogs shake the same? Is it the shake or the kind of hair they wear? The time warp machine has gone to Kimberly Wiener's Wags for Walks to find out. All right. Hey, Taka. It may sound weird, but I do, there's a lot going on with this fur to go against the grain here and see what I can get. Right around here? Yep. Ready? Sort of a focus point. Up, up, up. Time warp cameras reveal two types of hair on Mia. Large, stiff outer hairs called guard fur that repel dirt and water away from her under fur, which helps keep her warm. Awesome. Does that feel good, Mia? I think Mia likes you now. So let's bring Wyatt in and do a short hit. See this the swap. contrast. Look at that. 
Just give me sort of a against the green little brush. Perfect. Wyatt, a short-haired dog, has less guard hair and more under fur than Mia. Mia's got probably 10 times as much insulation. Let's put the shaking to the All test. Right. Ready? I always wanted to say this. Release the hounds. You ready, puppy? All I'm right, you're go free. As the law dictates, wet dogs shake. And lucky for us, we get a variety of wet fur to evaluate. First up, Bailey. She's a golden retriever, a type known for its love of water. They have medium to long fur that is virtually water repellent. Did you blink? Let's watch it in slow-mo. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like uh, 20 times as slow. That's really cool. I'm actually surprised how much it all comes from the head. It looks like she's contorted. That can't be good for her spine. Let's take a closer look. Her head turns a complete 180. It's this motion that propels the rest of her body, creating a ripple effect going all the way down to her tail. The different parts of her body aren't moving independently, but as a whole, it's pure transference of energy. Water is scattered at least two feet high and over two feet out. Now for our number two subject, Monty, a curly-haired Labradoodle with only a single layer of fur, no under fur to keep her warm. Now in warp time, if Bailey's shake was like wringing a sports towel, Monty's is like wringing out a mop. Such a difference, because Monty has curly hair. Her fur has clearly absorbed more water. That is so cool. It's like my head rolls. I think that's the whole thing. It's just kind of twisting the head back and forth, and that whole thing sends a little wave back through the whole body. I just never realized how much energy it probably takes to do that. Our slow-mo reveals that because Monty expends more energy in her shake than the thinner furred Bailey, she is expelling more water. Our last high-speed analysis focuses on an English bulldog. All right, this one is my personal favorite. I don't know that we had to slow down, Rosie. <gasps> yes, we did. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the biggest thing on her are jowls. We have made an incredible discovery. We have high-speed proof that Winston Churchill has been reincarnated. Now, Rosie has fine short hair and a lot of loose skin which adds momentum to her shaking action, allowing her to shed more water quickly and with much less energy than either Bailey or Monty. So there we have it. All dogs do not shake the same. It takes an amazing amount of force and, you know, exactly the right muscles, especially it looks like in the neck, to be able to do this kind of shake. I don't think humans have any capability to do that. I'm not so sure about that. Well, speaking of humans transforming into dogs, as you can see, most of the motion here is with the head. But unlike a dog's, Matt's shaking isn't transferring energy through the rest of his body. The movement of his jowls, while strikingly similar to Rosie's, comes from the side-to-side -side motion of his head. As a result of this experiment, we hereby declare an addendum to all laws, man, physics, or canine. Leave the shaking to the dogs. Here's a time-honored recipe for making long, cold winters go by in a flash. A bunch of long, wooden sticks, one hard rubber puck, a few good friends, add water, and freeze. For generations, kids have done this to get them through four months of deep chill. But in recent years, the scene on backyard ice has taken on a slicker feel. High-tech composite sticks of graphite and Kevlar. Let's give that a twang first. Marketed to deliver power and accuracy to hockey's most explosive weapon, the slap shot, have replaced wood at every level of the game. We invited Boston Bruin left winger Sean Thornton, known in the NHL as an enforcer. He's going to be our one-man control group. When did you get started playing? Uh, I was about seven, kind of late for a Canadian kid. What has changed in the game? Uh, 
mainly the sticks, I think. Uh, we used to uh, go to the gas station, grab $10 just crappy sticks out of a barrel and uh, go to the rink and use them. And now kids are using $200 graphite sticks. It's pretty crazy. So what do you think? Big difference between uh, old school wood and new composite? Now it's time for Sean to get the puck out of here in two tests that will settle the age-old sports bar controversy. Which is better? Wood or graphite? I'm hoping that the composite's uh, way more effective because I switched over years ago and they're pretty hard to find wood sticks nowadays. Yeah, so why don't we get started with the wood one, work our way up to the modern science. Sounds good. Sean is used to a bit more expansive rink, but you'll make do. <laughs> you all right? Only a flesh wound. Let's keep going. We could just get like three shots of each type. Give it my best. All right. Here, Sean demonstrates everything there is to see about an explosive slap shot off wood or graphite. And if we can't determine which stick is truly superior, well, at least we can get him to sign one. And here we go. Yeah. Let's watch the graphite stick. back actually the sure. uh, contact point just from hitting the ground there's a huge amount of drag but when you make contact with the puck there's this great shock wave comes right up and twists the whole thing and that's taken about less than a thousandth of a second to get through that's a tremendous amount of bend in that stick too right at that point you know right before it leaves the ground now let's warp the wood stick you're pretty consistent I would say that's you hit pretty much the exact same place when you take this slap shot with a wood stick, you know, how is it different from your normal composite? Wood's a lot heavier in my hands. That's about the only difference. I mean, I haven't used a wood stick in years, so I 